Hello, everybody. Welcome to Two Gals Talk About Elvis. Thank you for joining us this evening. We're going to go over what we've been going over this past uh, few weeks. We're going to go over um, Priscilla Presley's past um, because we went through some of the stuff that she's going through in her present. And just a lot of people, uh, especially in the comment section below, want to learn more about her past. And if you want to learn about her past, you have to dig up a book in particular to help you do that. Elvis and me is one of them because it's her side of the story. So everybody, a story has more than one side. This is another side. Child Bride by Suzanne Finstad. This is the side that a lot of people can actually uh, point out to when it comes out to what she's done and her ways and things like that. So you have to read into her past in order to understand some of the things that's going on in her present. And isn't that, isn't that about right, Miss Rhonda? Hey, girl. Hey, hi, everyone, and welcome to our show. Yeah, I would agree with you. I would say that is 100% correct. If you don't know anything about Priscilla's past, you're not going to understand why we've said what we have about her in the present. Um, and that is exactly you. You took the words out of my mouth. That's what I wanted to tell everybody is that the reason that the last couple of shows or few shows that we've done where we've gone into detail about what she's doing regarding the trust and all of this stuff and why it is so it's just brought everything to the forefront to us. It's like after reading some of the old things that we have read about her and then knowing what we've seen from things that have gone on with her involved with Graceland, what it has done is it's just validated all of the stuff we studied years ago about her. Um, Pretty much. But I, yeah. mean, I will, I won't be lying if I would say that, we don't have a few haters that, you know, think another way, but that's fine. That's what's, that's, that's what makes this country great is the diversity of our opinions because we have to all, you know, put everything together and do our own research. Now, some of the people have done their research. I have read the comment section below. I can't respond to everything, but I respond as best as I can because the last few shows, the comments have been a lot, guys, but thank you so much for doing so and a few questions indeed. Um, but the same thing that I have to say was there was more people on our side than there was people against us. And thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank y'all for fighting in our honor. Thank y'all so very much. You know, the thing is, you have to do your research. You have to know what your references and resources is. You have to dig into rabbit holes. You don't particularly usually do. It just depends on what you're trying to find out and what you're trying to learn about a person that you have not met. And you'd be surprised how much digging in the past of somebody that you got to learn a little bit more about them as a person. And I started digging about 1995, 96, because that's just what I was doing. I know Rhonda was digging uh, before that or even around the same time. Who knows, Miss Rhonda? It's just we have a lot of years under our belt studying Elvis and everything thereof that Priscilla was one of the topics we had to actually study. But this book, you have to agree, helped us do a lot of that studying. It, it did, you know, and I didn't read that book until um, many, many years after it came out. Um, because I was in the category of someone who, I, to be honest, I just took Priscilla. I didn't, I was more into reading about Elvis and, you know, all of this. And I had heard a few things about her, but to me, she wasn't, she wasn't as relevant as Elvis was to me, you know. But then after Elvis passed and things started going on with Graceland like they have, I started taking a bigger notice and a bigger interest and wondering why, why is she over it? I get the fact that she's Lisa's mom, but then when Lisa got older and she could have taken over Graceland, I found it odd that she wasn't more involved and that Priscilla still stayed involved. So that's what started my chain of just studying and studying and studying and stuff. And now you with everything that's know. going on, I'm like, just, I'm blown away. I mean, even this week, I mean, today I saw 
um, in Legally Us, I think it's called Legally Us is the name of the, the YouTube channel. And they were talking about how that Barry Siegel knew that Lisa had changed the trust and had taken them off. Now, Barry Siegel, for those of you who may not remember, is the guy that Lisa accused of mismanaging her trust and squandering millions and millions of her dollars. So if he was aware that the trust had been changed, how could Priscilla not be aware of it? That, that I makes absolutely say, no sense. I will say a lot of people have been talking in Elsa's groups, especially about that link and what's been discussed therein. And I will say this, a lot of them are saying, well, they think Priscilla has some kind of memory loss going on. They think maybe some dementia has kicked in or something because of the way that she acted on August 16th of 2021 when she claimed it was his birthday, when in fact it was Elvis's anniversary of his death. And she was about to even sing happy birthday. I mean, that really well, shocked she a lot of people. It. Yeah, she did yeah. start it when she found out, oops, yeah. I made a mistake. I better do this so the crowd can do it too. And but some of them were like to very odd. And, and, joined and, in. <laughs> and we discussed this when we did our show when she did that, actually, like that is very odd. Could she be possibly losing her mind? We don't know, but she is That's getting up not. there. She's getting up there in age, you know, and she claims that she never got any notice of that admitment to the trust, but Barry Siegel, Siegel did. Yeah. He and there's a courtroom stating that he knew he wasn't the uh, trustee, co-trustee anymore of that trust. Mm -hmm. And that was years ago, like in 2018. So everybody knew and got the memo, but Priscilla? I don't know, girl. Uh, maybe she That's, didn't look to get yeah. it, so she didn't look at it. Maybe she did get it. She's just like, maybe if I don't look at it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> maybe so. I don't know. Yeah, and then, maybe, 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 uh, if I don't, maybe if I don't look at it, it doesn't exist. Therefore, it's not legally binding. That's it. Well, I mean, we don't know, but it's going to come out. Guys, that's what happens in a court like this. You're going to see skeletons and things going underneath, coming out of rocks that you haven't seen or heard before. Be prepared, guys. I mean, we all didn't even know that she made like a million dollars a year almost on that trust, being just a name on that trust for years. So you tune into this court case, we're all going to probably find out things we didn't even know that's going to open everybody's eyes. These court cases aren't done uh, for the faint of heart. There's millions and millions of dollars at stake. So they're going to put through skeletons and all, Miss Rhonda, and all y'all skeletons and all. I wonder, though, if more and more stuff comes out that she indeed, this was a legal change and everything, if Priscilla won't just step back. I don't see her doing that. It doesn't seem to be her MO to just say, Okay, I was wrong. You know, yeah, I, I see her fighting for ever? now. Does she I plan think. on living forever? I mean, she she'll be seventy eight almost in May, right? I think so. I think so. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and then and she can go at any time. Yet she needs just more control. Um, it just seems to me like. She's not going to be here for very much longer. I mean, we don't know the day of our death, but she's lived a pretty good long life already, being 78. So it's like, why do you want this so bad? But the only conclusion that most people are coming to in the Elvis groups that I've been um, reading through, there's two conclusions. One of the conclusions is the control factor. She's been in control for so long, she can't lose that control, which is more understandable. But the other conclusion is the side that loves Priscilla and loves what she's doing. They think in their head, it's her way to keep Michael Lockwood away from the money. Well, it has nothing to do with Michael Lockwood. In fact, the trust is for the girls only. Why would Michael get a hold of it with this provision? Are you saying Riley Keough is going to give money to Michael Lockwood, you know, to just waste without having the girls, uh, you know, lives in mind. I really seriously doubt 
primary. I don't know. Know. I think the person that's very close to Michael Lockwood that we know is not Riley. The person we know that's close to Michael Lockwood audience is Priscilla Presley. They share the same publicist as well. Yeah. Well, the, but I do think there will have to be some kind of provision in there for um, Michael to receive some understand. type of monetary compensation yeah. because the girls the girls are going to need that to, you know, to be able to take yeah, care yeah. of. I, don't understand that. I think we all as an audience already understand by now. Right. But get child support. OK, so he's going to get some money to raise those kitties. And that's fine because they only have a few years left. Four years, they're going to be 18, guys. So, I mean, it's not going to be for very long. And then Michael Lockwood's going to be without money again because he ain't going to be raising those kids. So, you have to think about the future. And the future is those kids only have four years left. And then they're considered adults. They probably won't get into the trust until 21, but they're adults in four years, which is hard to, hard to believe. But um, Riley... Yeah would not give Michael Lockwood access to trust money, you know, like so Priscilla either. and some of no. her brood think that is going to happen. I'm sorry, Riley's going to keep that trust and she's going to do it the correct way. What is best for her and her sisters? Um, Y'all thinking that Priscilla is going to be best is honey child, honey children. You need to do your research and realize why she wouldn't be the best. Priscilla was a trustee. Lisa Marie made an amendment to get her out. Think about it in your minds, guys. Why would her only daughter want her out and put her only children in? Because that's fitting. That's what you do. When you do a will, when you do a trust, when you make your plans to leave this earth, you give what you have left in the control to your kids or the oldest kid so they can take care of the younger kids. You don't give that stuff back to your mama and your daddy. You give it to your kids. So you guys can argue until the cows come home about how she deserves it, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of us, and it's becoming more and more apparent each day with as many people doing research, a lot of us know different. And you can argue with us, but it's not going to work because we're not going to change our minds just like y'all ain't going to change your mind. But just and know, that's okay. And that's keep okay. it respectful okay with that. in the comment section below. Please keep it respectful. We yeah. don't need to be called dumb, stupid delusional i mean come on guys uh there's there's about a thousand adjectives even more in the world i mean just don't use them be nice if you're gonna make an argument make it intelligent please you don't have to have all these exploitant words explicit words thrown in there derogatory remarks you know you don't start your sentence with hey it's because you're dumb this is why no that's not really the intelligent way of going about things you just start 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 with your point, guys. Don't put name calling in the point. Yeah. And, and perhaps we might read them a little bit better. But I have been reading a lot of your comments, and I'm glad that a lot of y'all have seen the light. A lot of y'all realize why we're doing this show. We cannot cover the whole book tonight. There is no way, guys, we can do that. But what I thought I'd do is I'll read the jacket of the book so y'all can figure, you know, get an idea of what it's about, who wrote it, things like that. Rhonda has a few uh, things about the beginning that she's going to put in there. And I'm going to give my opinion. And you guys can listen to that and make up your own minds about, do you believe this book? Do you believe Priscilla's ways? Do you believe her being the perfect, angelic ex-wife of Elvis that she is? Or do you know and believe she has skeletons in her closet, just like everybody else does? Maybe it's just a little bit smidge more because it is uh, the Presley family, right, guys? So I'm just saying. Take what you have. Like, I want to just tell you guys, like, with all shows, this show is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Okay? Don't take everything we say literal. We do have references. We do give why we're saying these things. And I, like last time, didn't just cover one book like some person suggested. I, I actually went through two books. We started with Elvis and Me by Priscilla, and we went into Elvis and Me. Priscilla, Elvis, and me by Mike Edwards. And some of y'all weren't too happy about that. But that was fine. It was just to show you a character reference of a man who lived with Priscilla for six years, which is a pretty long time, you know. So there was that. And like before, this is a book called Child Bride by Suzanne Sinstad, okay. 
And this book was written in 1997. And let me tell you something, guys. When this book first came out, I was happy to pay the $25 for the hard book cover. I was happy to be in line to purchase that book because I couldn't wait to hear what this lady has to say because she was researching, found her old ex-boyfriends, her old ex friends from Germany, went to every link to interview these people and learn about El uh, Elvis's um, ex-wife's life, Priscilla. And here's part of what the book um, cover says. Besides the entertainment and educational purposes only for this show, guys, the graphics are made by Tanya Jenkins. And we just try to get the truth out there as best as we can. We know a lot are going to understand it and accept it. We know some of y'all will not. We're just asking y'all to please be very kind. If you're going to make your point or your opinion known, please be kind to the people who are reading the comments, okay? No need to be upset or nothing, but you can make a point without being mean or rude to people, okay? So we're gonna try to do that because I don't wanna read any more comments of people being rude. Just make your comment. And then we can debate that, but we don't have to be rude or mean with it, okay, guys? Um, also, all y'all returning subscribers, thank you so much. We've realized it has gone up in the last month, and we are ecstatically very happy. Thank you guys so much. I did read somewhere, Rhonda, where somebody thinks we're making money off of these videos. Girl, I wish. I saw that, too. I oh, saw that, too. And I, I, didn't, I didn't even bring myself. To, to comment on that because yeah. I didn't want to start a ruckus. But the fact is that we do not make a dime off of these videos. No. And despite popular opinion, um, we are not famous. <laughs> we are just two <laughs> girls. We're just two girls who enjoy talking about Elvis and talking about um, the Presley family and what's going on because bottom line, what is going on with Priscilla right now and Riley and Harper and Finley is going to affect what happens for the whole future of Graceland. So we need mm -hmm. to be concerned about it. We need to be, if you are an Elvis fan, if you want to continue to go to Graceland and you want to see it go down the right path, you need to really pay attention and get involved in it. I mean, I, I have to say this too, y'all. I got so tickled because I saw um, someone had taken a photograph of Riley coming out of a store and she has on a white sweatshirt and it says Graceland, home of Elvis Presley. And I thought, oh my gosh, is she sending like a little dig or a little message, you know, to her, to her grandmother, like, this is mine now. This is my sister's now, you know, I, Priscilla keeps saying, and we're fixing to get into the book, but but I want to say this, and so you guys will understand. Priscilla, I honestly think, believes Graceland is hers, that she is a Presley. She is not a Presley. She's using the name, but she gave all of that up when she left Elvis, and um, she wanted no more of it until he passed away and she i get the fact that she became a trustee for lisa she didn't have to be but she wanted it but then when lisa came of age she still stayed involved in it and a lot of that was because lisa wanted her to be but then things started getting sticky between the two of them and lisa was ready to just kind of let her her go but the estate kept her on and she was bringing down a whole lot of money. And I think bottom line is this boils down to, to more than just control. I think it boils down to money. I think it boils down to her ego. I mean, Priscilla has been, I mean, when you think of Graceland, a lot of people just think of Priscilla, but it's not hers. It never was hers. It really was Elvis's mother's. That's who we bought it for. So that's a little background and we're fixing to dig into the book just a little bit and tell you how it all got started. But um, anyway, I, I just had to tell you all what I thought about some of the stuff that I've seen lately and the deal with Riley and what's going on and 
why we're going to dig into this book to give you a little bit of the backstory that has made us, you know, get the opinions we have now. Yeah, but I still wanted to clear it up. We do not make any money off of our uh, channel. We make no money off of our shows. We do this for the love of Elvis Presley. That's it. So you guys can keep those comments to yourself. We don't make any money. Not yet, anyway. We are small potatoes, but we're growing. And I appreciate that we're growing because it just means people are listening. So thank you guys for, you know, watching our channel and supporting us. Thank you guys so much. It's people like you that make people like us have a voice on YouTube. So thank you. So I'm going to start right here. Suzanne Finstad made a comment about her book. It's right here on the very second page of the book. It says, I think it is important to clarify that while Priscilla Beaulieu Presley agreed to be interviewed for this book, she is in no way cooperated with or participated in the preparation of this book, and she has not endorsed Child Bride, nor does she authorize it. So that's the first page. So you could say that fate placed Elvis Presley, the most famous GI in the army in Germany, and that fate too played a role in Priscilla Beaulieu's family's transfer to that very same country in the same year. But that's where fate leaves off and sheer resolve takes over. As beautiful 14-year-old girl determines to meet the 26-year-old king of rock and roll, and the rest is truly history. Child Bride is the never-before-told story of Elvis Presley's love affair with Priscilla Beaulieu Presley, the only woman he ever married. For the first time, award-winning author and journalist Suzanne Finstad tells the intimate, behind-the-scenes story of Elvis and Priscilla's life together, a tumultuous, captivating tale of sexual attraction and obsession played out across two continents and two very different worlds. In Child Bride, Finstad carefully maps the relationship and circumstances that shaped one of the most successful and powerful women of her generation, a woman who almost single-handedly took a $6 million estate and turned it into a $100 million enterprise. Researched this book, The Child Bride presents a thoroughly fascinating profile of a woman who has been the subject of controversy and intense scrutiny for most of her life, but about whom there has never been a biography. Suzanne Van Stad is an award-winning author and journalist whose previous books are Sleeping with the Devil, Air Not Apparent, The Ulterior Motives. She lives in Los Angeles. And another book that she's done that she's putting on reprint is Natasha, a book that she did about Natalie Wood. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these, um, and I watched, um, we talked about this when we did something before the show, but I have to tell the, the, the audience this. I, I listened to a podcast today from a couple of years ago from the Jungle Room um, podcast. If you all know about Jungle Room, um, great. If you guys don't, it's okay. I'll put it in the description in, uh, below so you can listen to it. It's about an hour and 10 minutes. But you have them interviewing Susan Vinsad two years ago. And she said that every person who uh, got interviewed for this book was recorded on tape. Every single person that came back after helping her do this book and deny that they actually helped her participate in this book, all of them are recorded with voice recording so she could actually be able to transcribe it better to put it in a book. So all these people have been recorded, voice recorded, on voice recording, saying what all they were telling her for this book. So that was the podcast I was listening to. Plus, she said two years ago that she was going to do a child bride book, too, to cover the things that Priscilla has done presently. So I'm hoping she's chronicalizing what's going on right now, Rhonda, because I want to read. I want to read. Oh, that. my gosh. I want to read that. That is going to be an eye opener because so much has happened since she has written this book. But she makes in her um, right before she starts with her story, she she does a quote. She does a quote by L. Ron Hubbard, and then she does a quote by Elvis Presley. And it's Elvis's quote that I have to tell you all about. It says, 
the truth the truth shall set you free man the truth shall set you free man and i am telling you she has uncovered some things that she had to do some digging and she had to talk to a whole lot of people to come up with yeah, it. It's but, not um, like she got up one day at noon going, I'm going to write a book about Priscilla and I'm going to put all kinds of trashy fake things in it. So people will just believe it and move on with their lives. No, she researched, she interviewed hundreds, hundreds of people from Germany all mm -hmm. across the map um, to find out about, Priscilla Beaulieu and her family. Then she dug a little deeper and found a secret that Priscilla just told us and Elvis to me that nobody knew. That Priscilla was indeed a Wagner, not a Beaulieu. Yeah, that's what I was fixing to say. I was fixing to talk to him about that too. That the story of Priscilla actually, according to Suzanne Finstad, begins with Priscilla's mother. And her mother's name was... Um, Oh gosh, I'm just gonna blank. Do you remember her mother's name, Shauna? Anne. Anne. Is it her Anne? Was it Anne? Was it Anne? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I'm it was. Find this stuff real, real fast. Hold on. I can't believe it is Anne. It is Anne. Because Priscilla's middle name is after her mother, what so is it is Anne. Anyway, I'm just completely blank today. But anyway, it starts with her and um she was a young girl and and her story and priscilla's kind of mirror each other when ann met priscilla's dad who is not paul Beaulieu, it was um james wagner was her daddy's name and that he went by jimmy wagner anyway um he was in the um in the military and ann went used to go and unbeknownst to her parent her parents she would sneak out of the house and she met this um james wagner at i believe it was at a dance or something like that and he was what everybody called model beautiful the girl said that he was just absolutely you would just look at him and look like think oh my god she looks like a dreamboat from a magazine or something apparently this is where priscilla gets a lot of her looks from is from her dad but what happened was i think ann was like 14 or so when she met him and they started this you know seeing each other and they eventually got married and they had priscilla well it ended tragically um james wagner was killed in an airplane crash on his way back home he was going to be deployed to another place but before he left he wanted to come home one last time and see his wife see his parents but most of all see his baby girl priscilla and so but on the way home they the airplane went down and they crashed and he he was in the air force he was going to be be a pilot and i don't know remember if he was flying it i think he was it was him and another guy and i think they were both like piloting and co-piloting and the plane went down and they found it but it was you know it devastated um priscilla's mom ann um, because she really really loved this man in fact um suzanne finstad went as far to say as that it was he was like the love of her life and um she met paul I, really you. That. I mean the way yeah. that the way that they met and how it was really how she was young it was a world you know whirlwind romance i can see how it broke her heart when he died and then she has a very small baby and back then in the in the 40s that just makes you have to go find another man because nobody likes a woman it's exactly right. a small baby with no man being married so as soon as something like this happens you have to get you have to mourn to a degree but you have to get out of that and you have to find you a new man because in those in that day and age it was not it just it wasn't that common for a young woman to be with a baby without being married it just wasn't and even though she was married and a widow they accepted that at the time for a while but she moved on and it didn't take but like a year and a half or a year and whoever accepted her you know, Mr. Beaulieu, he, Captain Beaulieu, he uh, adopted Priscilla when she was like two. 
two years old, something before she could even remember any of this. Stuff. Well, yeah. What happened was, is that he, he loved Priscilla and he, apparently Priscilla was a gorgeous baby and <laughs> everywhere they went, you know, she would, people would pay attention, you know, and they would get lots of attention because Priscilla was such a cute little thing. And I believe it. I bet she was, <laughs> but um, he wanted to adopt her, but he made a stipulation to Anne. He did not want Priscilla to ever know. Can y'all see Shauna's say something, Shauna, because it won't switch this over is, unless you this do. Is, this is Priscilla when she was adopted um, by Bolio. This is her when she was a little bitty thing with her mother and her real father before he died. That was her yes. real father before before he died. But you know, as and that's him too up there. He is handsome. Mm -hmm. But you have her right here about to be adopted. Okay. Right there. Excuse me. She is a pretty cute baby. But that's the one thing about her book I really hated about Elvis and me. Who in the very first sentence of the book is, I was a really beautiful, beautiful girl growing up. I was so pretty. Who does that? <laughs> I don't know, but she did. We did. Anyway. Did. That's the one thing I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're pretty, but who writes a book and the very first sentence in the book is, I'm pretty. Oh, so pretty. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. <laughs> the West Side Story song all over again. I'm pretty. I feel so pretty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's just odd. It just fit me odd. Okay, okay. So she's in love with herself. We get that. Okay, so Priscilla's in love with herself, and she was a very beautiful uh, child, adult, whatever. But she, even Susan says that she looks like her real father, who was a knockout. Well, and no. the secret, but this is where the secret started early and she was taught to keep secrets. I think that's what um, was impressed upon my mind the most is that oh, Priscilla yeah, was taught at a very early age. Yeah. She didn't even know about her father. She I think her mother, I think her mother taught her early on what keeping secrets were about lying and keeping secrets. Her mother taught her early on how to do that. And she had many years because when Elvis put her under his wing, keeping secrets was a big thing too. So, and she was pretty good at it. So, yeah. you know, I mean, she was taught from a young age to keep secrets and that's not very healthy behavior to be taught at a small age that if anything happens to you, good or bad, nothing, you need to keep it a secret. Things can't be told. You know, you need to keep things on the down low, but it's not always a good. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just not saying she was a, a, a bad mother to teach her that. I'm just saying, I don't think personally that you teach your um, daughter to, to keep secrets and lie. Um, I teach my son to always be truthful, honest, and open. Because if anything ever happens, that your word is everything. And obviously, Priscilla's mother didn't teach her that. So she got taught early the complete opposite of most of what all of you teach your children not to lie and keep secrets. So yeah. early, like yeah. before 10 years old, early. Well, but she didn't find out that she was adopted she did not realize that paul bull you was not her real dad she wondered why she did not look like the rest of the family she didn't look like her brothers or her sisters she really didn't even look like her mom and she always wondered about that she certainly didn't look like like her stepfather or her no, adopted not like stepfather but adopted father she didn't look like him at all but mm -hmm. she always wondered and her parents had gone out one night and Priscilla babysat her brothers and sisters a lot. I take it that because she was the oldest and there was so much difference between them, she was home with those kids by herself. Oh, no, she was often. free babysitter when she could. Yeah. I know. She was I know. She free was babysitter. In. Well, she got curious and she went into her mom's closet and there was an old trunk in there. And she said she kept thinking, you know, I shouldn't be going through this, but she opened it up and lo and behold, there lay the secret that her mother Anne had been keeping from her 
all these years. Now, she was living in Austin, Texas when, when she discovered all of this. And she was rightly so incredibly upset to find out that she had basically been lied to her whole life. She did not even know who she really was. Not only that, she had been kept from her real grandparents on her dad's side for all these years too I because know. And that you, right there, reading that part in the book broke my heart I know. These, these these beautiful sweet people didn't just lose a son in world war ii they lost their son's wife and little cream you know little baby so it's like they didn't just lose a son they lost his son's daughter well it wasn't really and world war ii back then it wasn't world war ii back then it was peacetime Okay, peace time in 46. Please forgive me, guys. I keep forgetting that World War II was ended in 45. Okay, so it's so, peace time. All these people are having babies anyway. That's why it's called the baby boom, right? They're all having babies. Well, the reason I said it is because if I didn't, somebody would. So. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, okay, okay. World War II yeah. is over about a year, about a year after. So, okay. Yeah. But so. it broke my heart to realize that. Um, her grandparents didn't just lose their son um, in an airplane accident, but they lost their daughter-in-law and their grandbaby, and they never got contact. Except there is a little, there's a little in between there that was really strange. It was like photos being exchanged, but that was about it. And and a quick hello, hello, weird, weird situation. But that's it. So Priscilla was took away from her maternal grandparents at a very young age, probably two. And that's it. They don't see her again until they find her picture somehow with the king of rock and roll stating that she's dating Elvis. And then they yeah. said, that's her. And then that's what opened a Pandora's box for the Wagner family. Right. About right. trying to find Priscilla and what happened to Anne and Priscilla after their son's death. Yeah. So they had to go through some rabbit holes themselves mm -hmm. to find their grandbaby. But the thing is, by the time they find their grandbaby, their grandbaby don't know anything about them. She's a teenager. And Anne feels uncomfortable because she's married to a, another guy who, if he finds out that the old in-laws are there, wouldn't be a happy camper. Right. So he, didn't, yeah. he didn't want them to have anything to do with it. In fact, Suzanne Finstad says that, um, that that was part of the agreement in marrying him that she would keep her mouth shut and let Priscilla think that that was her dad. So when Priscilla calls her mom and asks her to come home from this party and what she had found, her mom comes home alone and leaves the dad at the, at the party. And the mom breaks down and tells Priscilla everything about it. But this is the kicker right here. She says, don't let your dad know that you found any of this stuff. I mean, it's nothing good comes from, us. nothing good comes from those four words. Don't let your, no, five words. Don't let your dad know. Cause that's lying. So she was taught to lie to her father from a young age. Huh. And that puts disrespect in a wedge right there. You know, your mom telling you that, or you grew up watching your mom do that. It's not something you, you it's not something you would want to do yourself in a relationship when you're grown up. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I agree. So I I I just that makes me sad for her. Um it makes me sad for the grandparents because how I mean I just it just it's kind of heartbreaking. So that's how her life started was on a lie. A lie and not even knowing who she really was, you know, and you would think that, I don't know, it seems to me that that lie was just perpetuated and perpetuated over and over and over again until she, you know, I mean, I mean, now she will tell you that her name was Priscilla Wagner. That's well, how she was born. But in her biography, it's no big secret anymore. Right. But like, like in the beginning nobody had a clue right nobody had a clue they thought she was a bull knew this whole time even her siblings didn't know any different but now they're half you know but 
I mean, she's real close to Michelle. She's been close to Michelle for years. Her and Michelle are very, very close. Um, I keep trying to realize where that echo is coming from, and sometimes I think I fixed it, and then other times it bothers me, and, like, right now I have it. Hello? Hmm. Is it on your end or my end? It's on mine. It comes and huh. goes. I don't know. Sorry, guys, if you hear it, please forgive me. I'm trying to figure it out. I thought I fixed it last week. Um, maybe if I get a little away from the camera there. Sometimes I get too close and I get too passionate, guys. I get too loud. <laughs> Um, Maybe the microphone's a little too close or something. Um, but, I, will, I will say for what you were saying, it's just to have to tell your teenager to lie to your father, who you thought was your father this whole time, and to have that inside for a long time. People, most teenagers I know would have to get therapy, you know, to talk it out, to get mm -hmm. that out of your chest. But, oh, no, Priscilla didn't get any of that. Uh, she keeps moving on being just fine and dandy dandy and fine you know i mean even uh her mother ann told her just to tuck it in you know hide it. it it's not important you know let's just move on be a happy family but most kids i know would have had some type of therapy to work out those emotions finding out you were adopted that your father is not your father that your father died many years ago when you were just a baby you only saw you maybe two times before he died. That's a lot to, to kind of um, absorb to grasp. But for some reason, um, when you start a closet like that with skeletons with your small child, they're going to grow up and accumulate skeletons of their own because you're teaching them to not work with your emotions, but to hide it, compact them down very low where people don't see it, hear it, or nothing. It's, it didn't exist. It didn't exist. So that that explains a lot about her being private and only giving so much of herself that she thinks is, is important. Everything else is quiet because she there's a lot of things she's holding on to. She don't want to give the world. But I can understand. I hold on to things. Rhonda, you hold on to things. Okay. I've, I've had therapy for some of the things I've had to deal with in life. I'm just saying I'm not perfect. I've had to talk to a therapist throughout my life in different parts to help me figure out some things that, you know, occurred. And a lot of people in the, in the audience, I mean, in the comment section below, please tell us if you guys have too. I mean, it's like we're not perfect. But the thing is, Priscilla didn't have that. We all got to have that. But Priscilla didn't. So getting help is important when you have to deal with something like that. But she didn't get that help. So what does that manifest into? I mean, Rhonda, you got that little look on your face. What does it manifest into if you don't get the help to talk it out and it's a big secret and it's a skeleton and I must not tell? What does it Well, it, it can do several things. It can boil up and be an incredibly you know, boiling point to where at some point you're just going to explode and against everybody that you're with, or you just learn to suck it up and you deal with it and you just keep it to yourself. You know, she, she eventually told Elvis because Elvis was like, when he came to their house and he met, he met her parents and her brothers and her sisters. He's like, you look nothing like these people, you know, and he kept pressing her for it and pressing her for it. Wow. Finally, she eventually broke down and told him and her mother had given her a locket that had a picture of her, her real dad and her in it. And Priscilla said she had even gotten to where she felt guilty wearing that locket because number one, she was afraid, you know, what if my dad sees me wearing this and he looks at it and he's going to see that it's my real dad. But he became, when she put the pieces together, she realized where she, what she had been missing. But she, she also, it, it's almost like it became a fantasy to her, you know, um, seeing the picture of her dad, putting him up on a pedestal. And then at the same time, about all this time, she's reaching, um, being becoming a teenager, and Elvis Presley is hit the scene. And oh, 
my gosh. You know, she says that um, she was never an Elvis fan until she met him. But I'm sorry, according to Suzanne Finstad, that's not true. She she had a best friend in Austin and they used to play a game. I think it was called uh, What If or something like that. And where she would pretend like she was marrying Elvis Presley and her friend was going to marry Ricky Nelson. And they would do this whole thing and they would play, you know, just like playing like girls do, you know, I mean, I probably used to do that myself. I, except by the time I got old enough, Elvis was married to Priscilla, but <laughs> I wanted to marry him. <laughs> even, in, even when I knew he was dead, I played what if. Yeah. What if? What if? What if Priscilla was never in the picture? But, but, anyway, um, but she know, was. She was a is, is a natural thing for an 11, 12, 13 year old girl to be doing. Um, but it shows in the book that she was doing it. She was doing it with her best friend. And Elvis Presley was the one she sang she was going to marry. And she was a fan because in the book, it states that her girlfriend in Texas gave, gave her the information to be a member of the Elvis fan club, if I remember correctly, in said Texas, where they were staying before they went to Germany. Whether she got into it or not is beyond, but I'm just saying for her claiming that she was an Elvis Presley fan and then finding out from her friends that she knew in a childhood that it's completely opposite, yeah, she told a tale. But guys, put it in this perspective. She wants people to feel like it was a fairy tale, like Camelot, like Camelot and 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 King Arthur. And, and Guinevere and all that stuff. Just just a big fantasy tale that made it so magical. Isn't that how stories are, though? You either make it magical or you make it a nightmare. And Priscilla didn't want to make it a nightmare. She wanted to make it so fate was brought in that it was so magic and sprinkled with fairy dust that it just made y'all think, Woo! It's, it's God-ordained almost. You know what, guys? It shows in this book, in its first few chapters, how she was a Presley fan. A fan. In fact, her mother was even more of a Presley fan than she was. Yeah. <laughs> but her mother, Anne, really thought he was a good-looking character. And the way he swiveled his hips, he could do no wrong. So you guys have to read this book and come up with your own conclusion. And tell us in the comment section below, who do you believe? Do you believe that she wasn't an Elvis fan? Do you believe that it was just all God ordained, that it was just perfection and it was fate that brought these two together? Or maybe the grooming of a mother that loved Elvis too, even more so, and that helped her daughter realize that Priscilla did have an uncanny resemblance to Deborah Paget, which was mm -hmm. Elvis was so dead, you know, head over heels for Deborah Paget, the very first girl that played in the very first movie he was ever in. Love me tender. And I will say, Miss Rhonda, besides the difference in hair color, they had the same similar type face. The eyebrows on point, the mm -hmm. deep, deep, deep big eyes, the big lips, the up the, the 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 high cheekbones and the don't forget the little cute pug nose. Uh -huh. Elvis was into facial features just like that, and that there are books written about how Elvis had a thing for faces, mm -hmm. and you can kind of um research that a little bit more. But Elvis did have a a a, a thing with facial features. And 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 how familiarity was something that he strived for um, in life. But I will say, Priscilla and Deborah Paget looked like I think, just like the book says, "Hey, we're moving. We're in Germany. He's in Germany. Let's try to make it where you guys meet each other, honey, because you look just like Deborah. Let's just darken those eyebrows a little bit, and you'll be on cue." You know, I just think that maybe, just maybe that groomed their daughter to participate in whatever project this was because the end result would be he's Elvis Presley. 
he's a millionaire. If you play this right, you could get somewhere, you know, with him in life with something. I mean, I don't know, but it shows in this book in the first few chapters and even in the middle of the book how I don't believe in coincidence. I really never really believe in coincidence too much. I believe if things are too much coincidental, it most likely was planned. So I don't believe in coincidence when it comes to things. I mean, Susan has dates in this book, and I wish I could read you this book. I've done it before, and Rhonda was with me when I was doing it on a radio show where we couldn't get sued. But you can't usually just read a book on air live for you guys because you can get in trouble with the copyrighted book. But we're just trying to give you a play-by-play -play of what we know is in the book and the first few chapters. And that's just one of the chapters that uh, is in the beginning of the book is how Priscilla looks like Deborah Gudgeon. And um, fate intervenes, and they're both in Germany now, you know, at the same time. And they're only like maybe, what, 20 minutes away from each other? That, oh, I think it was about an hour. I think okay, it was about an hour, an hour. away from uh -huh. each other. Not too bad. And, but it also shows in the book how Priscilla Presley puts herself out there to the point where she finds a guy named Gary Grant. <laughs> so, Miss, Miss Rhonda, explain to the audience who Gary Grant was. What he's not the actor Curry Grant. Curry Grant. Curry Grant was his name. Curry Grant, Grant was the and actor. Curry Grant is an yes. actor. They're both different people. So Curry yeah, Grant Curry is Grant. what we're talking about. Curry Grant, um, he was another um, guy in the military, but he happened to know Elvis. And his story and Priscilla's story vary. In fact, I don't even think we have time to completely go into all of it tonight. Oh, we're just going to so, give you guys a basis of the yeah. first couple of chapters, but, and then we're going to go through more of it next week, guys. Okay, we won't we won't leave you hanging, but we will at least at least tell the the audience, you know, who Curry Grant was and yeah, how he came into this story. Okay, so. He was at, there was a, a, a club, a little military place that all of the kids went and hung out at. And he had like some kind of show where I guess he spun records or he did something. I don't know. But but everybody knew who he was. But Curry had an eye for the ladies. And uh, he said when Priscilla walked in the first time, he noticed her right away. And that he was just, it's like his jaw dropped because she was that beautiful. And uh, he wanted to meet her. So, you know, he started talking to her and stuff. That's her story. But his story is that she had found out that he was a friend of Elvis's and that he went to see Elvis several times during the week. And she basically used him to get in to meet Elvis. Now, y'all, I can't blame her. <laughs> I'm not I'm trying to do the same thing to meet Elvis. You know, but what I find odd is not is that their stories are two completely different things. Yep. His story is that she searched him out. Her story is he invited her. So if y'all want to hear more about this give and take thing, I mean, Suzanne Finstad met with them both at the same time and they went at it and I wish we could read the back and forth between Curry well, and Priscilla. As much as I know we are allowed to pinpoint certain things. We just can't read the book from beginning to end word for word. Well okay well maybe we can well, we, can, we are by law allowed to nick pick and if you guys give us a whole nother week we'll come up and we'll nick pick the most important things that we could read to you guys to get an understanding of this relationship dynamic between Curry Grant and Priscilla Presley with her parents, of course. Her parents are a big are a big part of this. They were, they were a big part of it. And they um supposedly they had to give Priscilla had to get their permission to go, but it wasn't Priscilla makes it out, according to her book and all the interviews she has done, that her dad and her mom were very, very strict people. Well, her first night to go see Elvis, she didn't get home till two in the morning. 
And Curry was scared to death that Captain Beaulieu was going to just let him have it. But he did not. He did not. He just, you know, it was just kind of like, okay, well, you know. Hey, that's what I don't understand. She's 14, right? In another country, yeah. right? Yeah. My parents would have never done that when I was 14 in the small town we were living in. I had a curfew, and that curfew was never to be um, not done. And number two, if I was brought home by just some random older stranger, because Curry's married with children. Oh, yeah. That's my a dad whole had a school day, and I probably wouldn't have lived. He'd have probably killed me. Yeah. In fact, I think he killed me once. <laughs> Well, I just know <laughs> that if I came in late from a date and I wasn't able to sneak back in, I mean, I'm talking late from a date, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. I better have a really good excuse. Like we had a flat tire or something. Cause oh, we didn't have cell phones good. back then. It better be good. Or, or I knew I was going to be grounded and I wasn't going to be able to go out again. My dad watches these shows and, um, uh, He'll probably write down in the comments that my daddy was strict, and I guarantee <laughs> you, as much as my parents liked Elvis Presley, they would have not let me at 14 years old. And that's the point we're him. trying. That's the point we're trying to make to all y'all. I mean, would y'all let your 14 year old daughter spend time with a 24 year old man? A 24 year old man. I mean, there's 10 years difference between them, right? Yeah. When they're a 10 year difference. So she's 14, he's 24. <laughs> and I mean, the first, the first night, you know, you kind of get the fact that, that she's, you know, just meeting him and it was exciting and whatever. But this went on time after time after time where she wasn't getting home until she was, till it was two in the morning, almost every single time. And the reaction that the parents had was mind blowing to me. So if y'all want us to keep doing this and talking about it, we will. Um, we'll try to condense it a little more. So maybe it doesn't last forever and ever, you know, because we do want to yeah, talk yeah. about of course some things. We're going to talk, talk about it more. We can't do it tonight, but we will talk about it more um, and get to the nitty gritty of things. So you guys can understand the book and what we're trying to, to tell you guys, but there's more to this. It's not just this book, it's other things too. I didn't get to any of that tonight, but we will eventually because it's stuff from the past. It's not just what's in this book, it's things that weren't in this book. That's very interesting, especially if you go by what happened with the purchases of the planes at Graceland when they had to repurchase Elvis's planes to put them on display. What happened during that debacle? Plus, there's the point of certain things that have happened that was a debacle as well, but we'll have to explain how it happened. Um, if you all realize that there's more to a story than just one side. There's many sides to the story. You just have to pinpoint what you believe. Do your research. Um, learn who to follow to do your research. You know, that, that is very important. There are some people that don't even do research that say, this is, this is Priscilla's life, take it or leave it. And it's like, you left out probably 20 years of that life. What's going on here? Um, just do your own research. Find out what fits your belief system but i will say we're not going to steer you guys wrong and if you one of the very few that doesn't like what we said you just want to comment that you hate the show you hate us what we're saying is completely wrong then you might as well just skip our channel and go to an elf go to a priscilla presley lover channel where you'll feel more comfortable because what we've been doing and what we've always did is we're just giving you the, the angle that you guys need to learn from that we've learned from. And it's nothing that isn't new. We're not making this stuff up. There are references you can go through. There are books you can read. And guess what? In, in the back of every book you ever read, there's references and sources. Who they talk to, when they talk to them, and where they're at. So that's part of it too, guys. We haven't said anything that we're just making up ourselves. This is from books. This is from um, eyewitness testimony, you might say. Um, 
But that's pretty much it. We will dig into her past more because it seems like it's interesting for you guys to understand a little bit more about the ex. There's a little bit more about her than meets the eye, Miss Rhonda. Well, it is. And and her past set the pattern for who she is now. I mean, it it was like the blueprint and she just she followed it. And you know, I could keep on talking about it, but we've been on for a while now. And, I and know. I, you gotta go out of town, girl. You got past. <laughs> I do. I do. And I've, I've been on vacation this whole week, so I might just go and it's a beautiful day here. It's been all warm all day, like springtime. I'm about to go outside with my kid. I can hear him on the swing now. But, well, you know, it's just great to know that we have a life, and but we can always stop, get together, Miss Rhonda, and tell the world about Elvis Presley and some of the people and characters he knew in his life. It is nice. It's a blessing, actually. And you guys, we love y'all, each and every one of y'all. New subscribers, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. Please help us grow because that's just what we want to do is to get people out there to know more about Elvis Presley and the characters in his life, guys. It's important to us anyway. Yeah. Be sure and tune in next week because we will have Leslie Pilling on our show. Um, she. I think I've mentioned this before, but she is the lady who got the Circle G on the Register of Historical Places. She has got a lot of cool things that she's going to be able to tell us, and we're excited to have her on the show. So be sure and tune in. I think you're going to like it. Oh, yes. And please share us with all your Elvis loving friends. Okay, guys, please share our video. So anyways, guys, TCBTLC, God bless y'all, and I'll see you on the other side. Bye, Miss Rhonda. Bye, Shauna. Good night, everybody.